So, as Tinley said, I had some car trouble. Um, I knew that um, God was leading me to give share my testimony today, um, and I was really excited, and I wrote wrote it out like three different times so it would be just right, and I'd be in the right time frame and everything, and then Ben had a soccer game. My husband's out of town, and at 12.45 at the soccer field in South County, my van wouldn't start. <clears throat> And my bags at home with my journal. And anyway, um, I I was really downhearted. I was like, oh, the kids are screaming. AAA is going to be 45 minutes. I'm like, I, I should just quit. I should just go home. This is a disaster. Uh, why should I bother? And um, I took that thought captive to the Lord. And I said, no, he wants me to be here. This is Satan. This is, this is opposition from the enemy. No matter what. <clears throat> Where we're at or what we're doing, he never quits, you know, trying to attack you, trying to um, hold you back. And um, my friend Beth texted me, like, she's here. And I was like, okay, Beth's there. I need to be there. And then Tenley said, Satan is not going to win. And I was like, that's right. So um, I prayed, and my son was praying, and I really thought my van would just magically start after praying. <laughs> Like, come on, Jesus, you can do this. But that's not how it how it played out. He he had different plans. Um, I've learned that in my life that we can try to put limitations and expectations on God how we want Him to do something. He's going to answer our prayers. He's faithful, but He's not going to always answer Him the way we want Him to. And so I wanted Him to make it start just like magically, and um, or divinely. And um, now I had to wait. I had to wait on AAA, and I had to get more frustrated, and my kids had to get more. Um, impatient and then my friend showed up and she said I'll take your van I'll take the kids to the house you take my car um, I don't I won't have my notebook with my written out testimony um, I'll just speak and let the Holy Spirit guide me <clears throat> just probably better anyway um, in 2nd Corinthians chapter 12 Paul writes <clears throat> but he said to me my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses and in insults and hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So um, I, I just praise the Lord for that, that, um, he, um, that I know that that is true. Um, this week on Tuesday, November 4th, and Wednesday, November 5th, was the one year anniversary. Um, I'm gonna get a little emotional <clears throat> of when my brother Seth ascended into heaven. So a year ago, he lost his battle to mental illness. Um, it's a two year, two day anniversary because um, he committed suicide on the fourth. My mom didn't find him until the next day um last year on the fourth he had called me and um I could tell he was feeling down and um this was not unusual he had ups and downs I'd gotten used to that and I'd gotten used to him overcoming it and I was having one of those impatient moments where I was trying to get my newborn to sleep and my toddler was in bed and he didn't have anything to talk about and so I just decided after five minutes of trying to get him to talk and the conversation not really going anywhere that I needed to get off the phone and you know tend to my busyness. Um, I did not know that that was the last time I would talk to him. I did not know that I was the last person he would call. I tried to call him that night, and he didn't answer, and I just kind of brushed it off like, oh, he's probably in bed, I'll call him tomorrow, and then when I got the phone call the next day from my husband telling me that um, he was on his way home from work, I knew something was wrong, <clears throat> and um, he wanted to tell me in person, but I would not give him the chance, I knew. I... I asked him if Seth was dead, and he broke down crying. So um, I lost my brother 
my earth, my world just shattered into a million pieces. My heart was broken. There's just no words that can describe the devastation of losing somebody. But especially when you lose someone to suicide, it just adds another level of difficulty to the grief process. Because for the months that followed, I was so consumed by guilt that um, I everything was just dark and gray. If I didn't have three kids and a husband, I wouldn't have been able to get out of bed most days. Just keeping my kids alive was basically all I could do. For months, I just did the bare minimum. Like, I was just reacting to life. And I thought very naively, um, surely this is it. Satan is going to leave me alone because I'm, I'm down for the count. <laughs> and um, God's not going to let anything else happen to me because, like, I can't endure any more <laughs> suffering right now. But I was wrong. I mean, that's a dangerous way to think. Satan is never going to leave us alone. As long as we are a threat to his kingdom, then he is never going to leave us alone. And um, the months weren't easy. I was trying to grieve. I was trying to deal with guilt. And on top of that, my... Um, <laughs> Two youngest children were battling seven, in the course of eight months, we had seven rounds of croup. We had four ER visits. We had one hospitaliz hospitalization, one surgery. My son, Ben, was in kindergarten and was struggling, and it was not like him, and I just assumed blame for that as well. So my life was a mess, and it was just, just, um, just messy, and, uh, Eventually, um, you know, I just, all I could do was cry out to God and just raise my head up just long enough just to get a breath. And then I was just pulled back under by another wave of something. And um, there were times where it felt really dark and lonely and, and helpless and like overwhelming that it was never going to get better. I questioned whether God could bring any good from this. I'm like, I know you're faithful, God, and I know your word says that you can work all things out for good, but I just don't see how you're going to be able to do that in this situation. And through his word, his living and active word, through the community, my church, my small group, my husband, my family, my children, through pastors, through counseling, I, um, I was being pulled back out. I was being lifted up, and God was healing me. Just, you know, he says in his word that um, he heals the brokenhearted and he binds up our wounds. I'm always going to have a scar to bear in this life. My brother's absence is a void and it's it's a loss that I'm going to carry with me everywhere I go um, until the day we're reunited but um, but I do have healing God has restored joy to my life there was a time where I thought <clears throat> I don't think I'm going to ever have a day in my life where I don't have tears in my eyes I don't know if there's ever going to be a day where I'm going to be able to have more joy than sorrow and um he has turned that around. Um, I'm surrounded by beauty um, just everywhere I look. Um, and God speaks to me through that beauty every single day. So um, <clears throat> as I've been struggling to get out of, uh, out of this, uh, journey or not to get out of the journey, but to get through the journey. Um, God has been speaking to me very clearly some, um, very specific messages, um, or, or thoughts and, you know, um, I've, and I've asked him to use it for his glory. And so one thing that I have learned, um, on this journey is that I need to keep my eyes fixed on him at all times. Um, in Matthew chapter 14, it says, Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. 
You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Um, Jesus reached down, and he pulled me out of the deep sea, and he carried me back to the boat, and he calmed the winds and the waves. And he took me back to the shore, and he planted me on the shore, and it's a different shore than I was twelve a different shore that I was on 12 months ago. Um, but I've learned I have to keep my eyes and my thoughts fixed on him at all times. It's not just the big things. It's not just when you lose someone you love in a devastating way. It's when you're sitting in a parking lot and your van won't start and you don't want to go give your testimony because you're a mess. You just want to like, oh, wave the white flag and just go home and have a pity party. But I knew that that was warfare. I knew that that was Satan. He didn't want me to come here. He didn't want me to be with these women today. He didn't want me to share um, how how redeeming our Lord is. And, and to warn you guys, to remind you guys, I should say, that Jesus warns us um, in John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. And Jesus also told us in John chapter 16, in this life, we will have suffering. But take heart, for he has overcome the world. So, okay, he didn't promise us that life was going to be easy. He actually warned us life is going to be hard. You're going to endure suffering. I had to endure suffering. Jesus Christ had to endure suffering. So, yes, we will have to in this life. But he has overcome the world. He defeated death. We have victory. And um, my friend texted me, my best friend that has been, like, really faithful to speak truth to me through all of this, through my grieving. And um, she's, she's the one that encouraged me, Cassie, you have to rebuke the enemy out loud. Whenever you are feeling this low, you have to rebuke him out loud and tell him to get away. When you call on Jesus' name, he has to flee. Okay, Satan has to flee. And so my friend, she would text me, remind me of that. And on the anniversary of my brother's death, she said, Can you believe he has been in the presence of the Lord for a year? Can you imagine the year that he has had? And I'm just like, that is what, that is what God's word is telling us. I don't have to sit that sit at home and dwell on my guilt and dwell on my brother's suffering and his illness and and the fact that he was 32 years old and I thought he should have had a longer life and that he's not here with me. I don't have to dwell on that. I can take those thoughts captive and I can fix my eyes on the Lord and fix my 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 mind on the truth and Remember that our separation is only temporary and that I will be reunited with him. Thankfully, um, we all stand before, stand, stand before God covered in the Stubber, covered in the blood of Christ, and I am so thankful for his grace, for his just unending grace and his love. Um, my brother, um, he had... A, a lot of demons. Um, the mental illness was the root of it, but his faith in Christ was the one thing he had in his life that he always held on to. And I, I'm thankful that um, I can stand up here and, and say that I know where he is. And he's had the most amazing year. And it's been a horrible year for me. But um, God has brought a lot of beauty out of it. Um, he has brought me closer to him than I've ever been. In my weakness, I've realized how much I need Jesus, and um, his word tells us that also. And um, I just want to encourage you ladies um, to remember that whatever you're dealing with, or even if you're not facing a, a major crisis right now, the enemy is um, going to come after us over and over and over again, um, as long as we are a threat to God's kingdom. But greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. And we do not have to um, be defeated. We do not have to stay down. And God's word is like the most amazing tool that he has given us to fight the enemy. And that is where I've gotten the most comfort, where I've gotten the most truth, the most healing, the most strength is from his word. And 
Um, I've reached out to the community um, that we have here at Rooftop. Um, I talked to Joanne because she's a mental health counselor. I talked to Pastor Jeremy. I talked to my small group. Um, I talked to some of the ladies in this room that would just that took me out for coffee and just listened to me. Um, and so many people prayed for me and prayed over me and laid hands on me. And so it's like God is not abandoning us. He will never abandon us. He tells us that in his word. Um, do not be discouraged. Uh, for I am with you. And um, if we just um, turn our eyes, take our eyes off of our problem and focus our eyes on him, he will sustain us. He will carry us through. And we cannot um, put a limitation on how big God is. Um, you know, I, the Bible tells us that his ways are above our ways. His way of thinking is above our way of thinking. We cannot comprehend um, what he is working out for his glory. We do not know um, why he allows bad things to happen, but I do know he does not will bad things to happen to his children. It is the enemy that is um, attacking us. It is the enemy that comes to kill and to, to steal and to destroy Um He came to give us life and to redeem us and to give us hope. And we have that hope in heaven. And I know that whenever I stand before God, and this came from Pastor Jeremy, Cassie, whenever you get to heaven and all things are revealed, do you think you're going to say, no, God, you got that wrong? Sorry, you were wrong that time. Uh, I laughed out loud. Like, that's the most ridiculous thing I can think of, that I would stand before God and and. And say, no, you were wrong. <clears throat> Although I think sometimes in this grief process, losing my brother, there were times where I definitely thought that, that it was wrong, that that couldn't, he could not bring any good from it. But, um, but he's, he's healed me and he's given me a story and he's given me hope. And I know that that can um, be used to help other people that are struggling. And um, I know my brother is healed and whole, and I will see him again. And um, who knows? Um, God is sovereign, so who knows why he allowed my brother to take his life, um, to go home early. Um, But I will, you know, someday I will get to have that question answered. Um, Anyway, I just want to close it up by saying... um, in the 12 months that I was struggling to survive, um, the last several weeks I've realized, okay, it's time to get out of survival mode. Um, you weren't put here just to survive. You were put here to thrive. Uh, as long as you're alive, God has a purpose for you. And he has um, something for me, and it's right here. It's right now. Um, I don't have to feel like I've been cheated. I've been chosen, and I'm right where I I am right where I am right now um, for a reason. I'm right where I'm supposed to be. And Satan wants me to devalue my position and devalue who I am. But I am a daughter of the one true king. And um, he is going to do great and wonderful things in my life as long as I allow him to, as long as um, my, my heart is fixed on him. So I would encourage you guys to... Um, just live boldly for God. Um, seek seek Him and what He has for you through His Word and through the community um, that we have here. And um, let God be big. Thanks.